And all of a sudden, when they were leaving, what you start firing on people when they were leaving? The police were firing. Yeah, they're 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 walking away. They started throwing pepper spray and all this at people. The police did that. Yeah, yeah. Why would the police have done that? Arizona police using tear gas, also flashbangs, as um, apparently rubber bullets and smoke canisters, and possibly pepper spray to disperse crowds numbering in the thousands last night outside the president's rally at the Phoenix Convention Center. We do have some news. We've got reports coming in that the Phoenix police chief, police chief, does stand by the officers, but apparently the actions will be investigating. Investigated. Now, the police chief said this was only in response to officers being attacked with bottles, rocks, and tear gas by protesters. Let's bring in Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Now, Good Sheriff, our own reporter, Jeff Flock, he was on the ground reporting on the protests. Um, it, they, it got violent. There was a lot of action there. How do you feel the police responded here? A plus. I was proud of the Phoenix Police Department. They were prepared, they had a plan, they were properly equipped, their, their force was reasonable, it was measured, they kept the peace, very few injuries. I'll tell you what, when I hear the agitators that show up, and look, they showed up to do one thing, and it wasn't protests, which is why I call them agitators. They showed up to harass and intimidate the, uh, the Trump supporters who wanted to attend the rally. But at the end of the day, when I hear it's the agitators who are complaining about the tear gas and the rubber bullets, I say job well done. Now, Sheriff, you've been staying on this and you've been watching these protests and these violent riots taking place across the country. Can you talk some more about how police themselves are being attacked? We're seeing, we're hearing rather about rocks and bottles and bags of urine and feces being thrown at police officers. What more do you know about that? Totally inappropriate. Those aren't, that's why I say these aren't peaceful protesters. They come down to harass and intimidate. But when you attack the police, you assault the police. That's a felony, and the police have the right to use any and all reasonable force to defend themselves, to keep the peace, and so that's what we saw. But what I'm glad is that finally somebody got it, the Phoenix Police Department. No stand-down orders, no bend but don't break, no holding the line like we saw in San Jose and Berkeley, in uh, Charlottesville, and, and in Baltimore. It leads to more people than necessary getting hurt and killed, more law enforcement officers than necessary getting hurt or killed. Those officers were professional, like all of our officers across the country. And when that model is used, it was used in Phoenix. It's what I used in Milwaukee during the riots last year. You have less property damage. You have fewer injuries. You have fewer deaths. And that's what you want in these situations protection of life and property. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second because we have seen standoffs where the rioters come face to face with other groups. We saw that in Charlottesville. We've seen rioters uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, ruining property. We saw that in Washington, D.C. Here's what we're hearing the officers did, to your point, in Phoenix. They had a line of police officers that pushed the crowd uh, toward one street. The officers also blocked intersections. And they actually warned uh, police, uh, the crowd. They warned the crowd from a helicopter uh, to leave or face arrest. What are your thoughts there? Well, that's what you're supposed to do. That's why I gave them an A+. Plus. Uh, you, you give out the commands. You tell the crowd what you want them to do, what you don't want them to do, what you won't tolerate. But like you said, these, you cannot allow these two groups to come into close contact with, you, with each other like we saw uh, in Charlottesville. So, again, that's the model. It's not new. That is the successful model to use at these um, uh, incidents where there's the potential for violence. Kudos to the Phoenix Police Department and that chief. They're going to be just fine after that investigation. And what they did was reasonable and it was measured. And to your point, Sheriff, I mean, we have senior citizens coming to these rallies. We have, uh, you know, parents with little children, even infants, babies coming to these rallies. That's the point, right? Protecting people. Uh, correct. You know, they're just exercising their First Amendment right to attend a political rally. Uh, cheer on their candidate. You know what? When Barack Obama held them, I do not remember any conservatives or anybody on the right showing up to harass and intimidate people who wanted to uh, attend a Barack Obama rally and, and support their candidate. So we're seeing completely unacceptable uh, behavior on the part of these agitators. There is no place in our American democracy for that sort of behavior, and it needs to be crushed.